Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, Joey McGuire, Grant McCaslin, both going George Jones, asking who's going to feel their shoes. And we give you the 2024 Tech football headline, at least as we see it. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, always free and available on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. And today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today. And you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started with the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. Chris, great to be back with you again today and a variety of subjects to cover on today's episode. Before we're out of here, we will get back to the land of Grant McCaslin and Red Raider basketball. We want to run down some of what the priorities or preferences are going to look like as far as the transfer portal and rebuilding your roster is concerned. And you and I will toss around a couple of our own preferences in case Coach McCaslin is looking for some notes. We'll offer up some ideas uh, as well on today's show, but we want to kick it off revisiting Joey McGuire's world as Red Raiders spring football camp is rolling on. And I know that we have a couple of different things to touch on here today that might be on some folks' radar. Maybe it's nowhere near your radar, so please let us know some of your answers to these questions that we'll have in the YouTube comments. Always love to hear from you. We're going to hear from Red Raider secondary coach Marcel Yates coming up on a big challenge for him and that group rolling into 2024. But wanted to kick it off, Chris, with what you and I consider to be headlines for this Texas Tech football team, as in the headline, the storyline for the Red Raiders rolling into the fall. Now, some of this might include some spring-centric competition or drama or intrigue some of this might not uh some of this might be much bigger picture as far as the conversation goes for this team this year so we've talked about some of what to anticipate as far as spring camp is concerned some of these things we'll touch on here may reach obviously well beyond that and i'll get her kick started uh with that kind of example because i do think that what is at the top of my list chris is not necessarily something that you know, packs much of an intrigue punch as far as spring camp itself is concerned, because I hope and kind of anticipate there's not a whole lot of drama or competition here. But the headline for me for this team in a lot of ways is the fact that it is Morton's moment. We have got quite a shift as far as the quarterback room is concerned. There's sort of an era that comes to an end whenever Tyler Shuck leaves the program. Obviously, you had been invested in him for quite some time even though it wasn't always him that was out there taking the snaps because of injuries or obviously other things outside of your control. And we did get a very healthy dose of Baron Morton a season ago, but it still wasn't a, hey, here's the car keys, son. There's a green light at the beginning of the year. Now drive this sucker to the finish line. There was a lot of conversation about who's getting the start here, who's getting the start there. Okay, this guy's injured. This guy's not feeling good either. How about a freshman quarterback in Provo, Utah? I mean, the quarterback conversation packed a lot of drama. It could, again, certainly bracing for that, but hoping not. And I think for my money's worth, uh, as far as positions go and importance to the team and things like that, Baron Morton finally getting the uh, the keys and the green light to be the guy is at the top of my list, Chris. We're sort of entering uh, a new era, I guess you could say. <clears throat> yeah, and I and I think uh, Baron is a much different person right now. Now that he kind of knows what the situation is, I think he acts. He's acted different. I think he's operated different. I think he's prepared differently. Uh, there's just something to be said about you know, <clears throat> not I'm the guy versus okay, I'm trying to be the guy, or I'm kind of waiting in the wings, or or whatever. And I think that you know that that is certainly something that uh, you know people have noticed uh, with 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 him. And I think it's been a very, very much of a, a positive. You know, mine, I was trying to think of how to phrase this. Um, it's, I don't know if this is like a wish list or or something that must improve uh, based off of last year. 
look, we can get into keeping your quarterback healthy. The guy that you just you just mentioned uh, as a, as a storyline or something that you know it, it's a must. It's a non negotiable if you want to have the kind of year that you hope to. We could also talk about the offensive line up front and and how that needs to gel quickly, and you need to hit on a lot of these pieces and protect that same quarterback. But to me, I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with a word that I think that you know each side of the ball uh, shares in, in in the need to be more of it, um, and that's explosive. Mm. I. Um, you know, 17 takeaways last year, you know, 13 interceptions, four fumbles, you know, you, you talk, you hear a lot about take three. Well, how many games did you play last year? We could do the math when you have 17, you know, there's not, I mean, you know, I mean, some of the teams that lead the country in turnovers get into the 30 to 35 range and you, you, you hear you are at 17 and we talked ad nauseum about how many times you turn it over as an offense, but certainly didn't do near enough of of taking it away on defense. And the flip side is offensively, the longest run you had for your team last year was, was by a quarterback. The second longest run you had uh, on the season was by a quarterback. Okay. The longest pass reception you had was by a guy that graduated and is Xavier white, uh, and ironically, BYU was the scene of the crime for uh, the longest, the second longest run by quarterback and the longest reception ended up in a loss. <laughs> I, I just say explosiveness. This is why you see them recruiting so much speed. Um, you, you need to, I'd like some Central Florida in my diet. I'd like some Oregon in my diet. I'd like some, you know, just like, okay, we don't have to call the perfect play. We get it to the right guy and goodbye i mean and you just don't have uh, a lot of that it's it's difficult to win football games consistently and to try to win the league when you can't wreak havoc on on either side of the ball and so i'm asking or or kind of i think a storyline there is is just explosiveness in general next year and i think that'll tie in great to what we're about to talk about with uh, marcel yates and his (laughs) secondary obviously looking for some dynamic plays to be made there but before we leave, say, the offensive side of it. Is Baron Morton that kind of quarterback you think that can contribute to that sort of uh, explosive offense? I know that we think we've got some pass catchers who might be more apt uh, to make some of those big plays. But, you know, last year I remember uh, so often, you know, thinking about going down the field with Morton and, you know, kind of wondering how an injury might contribute to an inability to do that. I got to say, I, for the most part, still don't, really think I have a great feel for what uh, Baron Morton's arm actually is, if he could sort of unhitch the wagon to a degree, if he is feeling good, if he is anywhere near 100%. How how do you see him specifically as a quarterback when it comes to making some big plays? And that doesn't always have to be, hey, you know, chuck a bomb down the field, but sometimes it looks like that. (laughs) He's he's Cody Hodges. So, yeah, I mean, I I think that – <clears throat> strong arm, very athletic. Um, he, he, he's just got a lot of moxie. Um, and I think that, you know, he, I, the, I don't worry about all about his arm strength. I think he'll be fine. I think the shoulder issue, I don't think it's like chronic. I think it's just time. And, and I think he's going to get that time. And I think he'll be managed uh, differently going into next season. But yeah, he's got all the arm strength you'd want. And he's, and he, you know, as Joey and Zach talk about it all the time, he loved to sling it. Yeah. You know, we have we have to tell him to chill out sometimes, you know, like we can't <laughs> we can't just, you know, run the go route every play. Uh, otherwise, that's where he's throwing it. But see, now now he's got some different pieces uh, yes, to, to go to, you know, he's got some different uh, and, and see. And I think I think they all play off of one another, you know, like all the, the, the speed and these pieces, the ability to get behind the defense with multiple folks that helps the, the, the Taj aspect of, of this thing, too. And yep. then the Taj aspect of this thing helps, you know, helps the the the, the other guys. So, um, but yeah, I, I think, uh, I, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to just a more explosive offense in general, and Baron will have a lot to do with that. You certainly like to think that a lot of those things can go hand in hand, and and I say that it doesn't always have to be a bomb because we're also hoping that you've got some guys who 
uh, may catch a pass behind the line of scrimmage or a horizontal type play and still be able to make some guys miss and turn that into an explosive play. On the flip side, guys that will be looking to keep opposing offenses from doing the same uh, under Marcel Yates, your group of defensive backs, both on the outside and the back end of that defense, Chris, you have got some shoes to fill. I know defensively, really on multiple levels, save for the linebacker position, which is flipping the script really from where we were uh, entering last season, you have got some big shoes to fill, but we got to hear this week from uh, DB's coach, Marcel Yates, talking about some of what he wants to see this spring and some of what the priorities are as you head into 2024. Here is Coach Yates. First, today's episode brought to you by FanDuel and say adios to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset, a one seed, or anything in between, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines, overs, unders. You can even pick who's going to win it all just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets with fanduel today's episode brought to you by ebay motors and ebay motors has you covered with everything you need to maintain your vehicle and keep that ride or die ride on the road or if you're just looking to elevate your car's game to the next level of performance they got what you're looking for with roof racks exhaust kits led headlights superchargers and accessories of all kinds to fit your style whether you're looking for speed, power, or design, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts to perfectly fit what you need. So just head over today to ebay.com slash motors where you're going to always find exactly what you're looking for and with no risk because of eBay's guaranteed fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit just right every time or your money back, keeping you burning rubber and not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to keep your ride or die ride on the road and moving your life forward at ebay.com slash motors ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers eligible items only exclusions do apply some of what the priorities are as you head into 2024 here is coach yates for me it's all about guys understanding what they're doing uh and then playing, you know, hard and fast, you know, and uh, the physicalness. I still go back to looking back at the last two seasons, you want your corners to be more physical than what we were, you know, and whether that's getting off blocks, whether that's, you know, for the run game or whatever it may be, you know, so I feel like with this group, I think we have some physical corners. I mean, I think this could be a popular choice for uh, storyline number one for some Tech fans, Chris replenishing restocking uh the defensive secondary yeah and you know i thought it was interesting uh w the way he kind of phrased things there it's a bit of a, a bit of an easter egg there that you can kind of get some uh a little frustration out from last year on like maybe why you weren't as explosive or you know didn't create enough uh, takeaways but uh, you hear the word uh physical and uh and i think that you know we've got to get better there uh, which I thought, you know, I don't know is that I, – I, I think we all knew that Rashad Williams wasn't necessarily a the most physical corner, maybe more of a finesse guy. Um, you know, Malik Dunlap, I think, had some physicality to him, and we know what what Rabbit and, and, and some of those other guys provided. But uh, that's who you're replacing is those two starting corners and, and Rashad and uh, uh, obviously Malik. And – you know, Braylon Lux is going to get an opportunity. He was kind of that third guy, and I think he kind of got incorporated in the starting lineup a lot last year because of the lack of physicality. And Braylon wasn't perfect, but he'd stick his nose in there. And, you know, he was better in the run game. Uh, he, he didn't let, you know, receivers get a clean break off the line of scrimmage and things like that. And that's what uh, I think they feel like Mohorn can do a good job of. Uh, you, you know, Jalen Peoples is a guy that they're very, very high on. That is a younger guy that one of the part of those uh, initial recruiting classes that I think everybody has kind of talked about. He's finally kind of gotten it and grown up a bit and starting to make some. But it's all about physicality. I think that's uh, very interesting for Coach Yates to kind of point directly to that because you don't really think about that when you're talking about a corner sometimes 
but this is college. And when teams are running those screens, uh, they're running, you know, wide sweeps and things like that. You got to be involved in the run game too. And, you know, or, or the, or the quick game, if you will. And I just, I, it sounds to me like uh, the Red Raiders want a huge upgrade in that uh, intangible box right there. And maybe they feel like they're getting it. Yeah. I think it can be a simple message. Uh, if you're a DB's coach to your cornerbacks, like, Hey, you don't have to worry about being physical at all. As long as you run and move laterally like Deion Sanders. So if you can do that, then sure, <laughs> sure. Don't worry about being physical. If you can't do that, then you may want to bring some physicality to your game, right? I mean, he was, I mean, he was one of the least physical all time, but also one of the great speed and quickness specimens of all time. So it's like got to be that good in that area if you want to shuck the physicality, I guess. And I don't know. We still got a long ways to go, but I, I hadn't quite seen anybody show up that's uh, reminded me of Deion's speed. So I uh, need to be physical. I, you know, you, you, you've you been a Cowboy fan for a long time. Um, and I, I remember in the mid 90s, whenever they they trade for him and all that, and he, it, it, you know, because he's had he's had these these toe injuries and things like that that he's dealt with even in, in, in modern times, like right recently. Yeah. But he had those issues way back uh, with the Cowboys. And so, uh, but when, when, whenever I used to love watching him make a business decision, it used to frustrate <laughs> me. And I like, I was young enough to where I'm like, what's he doing? Right. Like, or, or not doing. Uh, but the older I got, I'm like, I mean, he's making a business decision. Like, you know what? Yeah. I don't think right now I'm going to put my head in that pile. I'm just not going <laughs> to do it, you know. But but when you're fast enough to take away half the side of the field or you, you can bait and you're, you, you, you bait the quarterback and you quick enough and kind of play cat and mouse there a little bit. Yeah, you're you're uh, you're on an island there. Uh uh, I guess yeah, that that's one of the the exceptions to the rule. But you know the other guy um, that <clears throat> I thought was Joey's. I've heard Joey tell the story a couple times. Um, I had somebody else tell it to me too. But you know they've got this this young man by the name of Devin Cromwell that yeah. came, the, came from Canada, and I didn't know this. It, it, but this is the kid talking to the staff about this, and I'm like, it's just funny how. And maybe this story's been embellished. I don't really know, but. I guess in high school, you know, up in Canada, they still do like a lot of the CFL rules, okay? Which you you got a goal post in the middle of the end zone. You can get behind the goal posts. You know, you you can you can be in motion, and you know you don't have to be at a, a you know be stopped at the time that the ball is snapped. You can like you know come running at the line of scrimmage and, right. and all these things like they do in the CFL. Well, Cromwell tells the the coaches, you know, back in. Uh, January ish, I guess when he gets here and they're going through walkthroughs and doing some different things, he's like, Coach, so they they they're not in motion and like going to be running right at me whenever the ball is snapped and and they're they're like, no, Devin, it, it's they're they're stopped, you know. Like he goes, really? Well, I can easily cover these guys. Then I mean, like that's no, I mean, so he's thinking, I, I get you know, because imagine you know you got a guy running at you, it's got a head start, it, it's going to be a little bit twi- you know trickier to try to cover a guy one-on-one like they, like they do in the CFL, but he's like, man, this American stuff, this is pretty easy. So uh, anyway, I thought that was a, but he's another guy uh, that, that's very fast, uh, brings a solid track time and all those things. And he is, uh, he's somebody that they're looking to add to that uh, physicality too. So uh, any update? Cause I know these guys got mentions from coach Yates and uh, will continue to get mentions, but uh on the young law firm of uh, Sanford Lewis and Jordan, who uh, obviously were on the field a good bit of time a season ago, and I would imagine are going to factor in heavily here. Not at corner, I don't think. I think you've got one at star. I think you've got one at boundary safety and one at free safety. Now, I do think that there is enough blurred lines here to where – they all are a factor at some level. Um, you know, it's funny if you ever talk to like Coach Deruder about because some of this gets very confusing. It's like DB, linebacker, safety, corner. Are you nickel? Are you the dime guy? Yes. I mean, you know, so <laughs> right. it, it, it's like, well, it depends on what package we're in, it depends on. Uh, you know, the matchup that we're going against depends on down and distance. Uh, and so, like I said, it's it, the, the lines get really blurred. It's, 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 I want to put them, put them in all these guys in these nice, clean, like compartments, you know, and like, okay, let me open up my corner box and see who all we've got in there. And it's, it's, you know, it's not necessarily 
like that. But as far as like pure, you know, corner, I don't think either either one of those three in the law firm or, or you know are practicing. However, I think that multiple of those guys can play corner. Probably will be asked to cross train and all that and 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 whatnot. And so we're early enough in the spring to where the expert, you know, they're doing the experiment experiment, excuse me, of trying to get guys at certain spots. But it's like Dingle moving from, you know, linebacker to star. And, um, you know, s- some yeah. other guys, Jamori Davis moved from linebacker to he's also a corner. Uh, you know, he got moved uh, the, the the running back signee from uh, a year ago that was it was out injured. And he's kind of on the lower end of the depth chart from a corner standpoint. So uh, I, to answer your question, I think you got one closer line of scrimmage and you got the other two back there operating at both safety positions. Yeah, I thought I heard Coach Yates, and I'm, I know I'm going to get this confused, Brendan Jordan, Jordan Sanford, uh, so correct me where you know I'm going wrong, but um, Lewis and Jordan, I thought I heard mentioned as safeties one and one A, not at the same spot, but that these were guys that were kind of the plan, at least to start things on the back end. Yes, and, and obviously C.J. Baskerville back there. I mean, you've got, you know um, – I think they really are high on those two, uh, or, or really that 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 trio, uh, the triplets. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Deion Sanders, it's funny because that's <laughs> uh, that was back in that triplets era for the for the Cowboys. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, I think you've got you know uh, plenty of options back there. I, I do I, I do think corner pure corner. Okay, I, th- I think that's a bit of a question on this team. I really do. I think that's a, a bit of a. It's not a question like the offensive line. And I, th- I think Braylon Lux is obviously more than capable, but I don't think he's like an all-conference guy per se. And then I think you, you're like you're ready to hand it off to Mo Horn, um, and I think you feel very comfortable about you know the the, the depth you've got at, at, at safety. But there's no doubt, like you're gonna who's the rabbit back there? Who's mm. the who's the QB? Uh, back there that you're going to really, really lean on that that checks all the intangibles boxes of leadership, gets everybody lined up correctly, um, plays like his hair's on fire all the time. I mean, who, who, who's this person? You know, I mean, that's yep. that, that's a huge gap um, and one that's not all just filled by somebody that that plays that position on the field. I mean, there's a lot of extra that came with Rabbit. And granted, this oh, yeah. is a – it's a fifth or sixth year guy that's going to be one of the top safeties picked in the draft, you know, uh, which I love that. I mean, I, I keep reading that. And I mean, I, I'm like, man, I'm thrilled for that kid. No, nobody is, uh, uh, deserves it more than, than, than that uh, young man does in his family. Yeah. That's one thing I was going to point out was all the snaps that, uh, he had seen. And, uh, it's just hard to replace that. We're talking about some young guys and some young guys who got a lot of snaps last year. So hopefully that, paying some dividends here this season, but it's uh, very, very tough to replicate all the football that he had seen and all the lessons that had come with that when you're talking about re- replacing a guy like Rabbit. We're talking about filling shoes, replenishing a roster, and that's the same thing we can talk about to wrap up today's conversation with Grant McCaslin's basketball program. First, this week's March Madness Bracket Highlight brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that's standing out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. Today, again, at our expense, the NC State Wolfpack goes the way of the Nissan Rogue, continuing their surprise run now into the Sweet 16. They say, win life, go rogue, and that's exactly what the Wolfpack continue to to do take the nissan rogue nissan pathfinder or nissan armada and go find your next big adventure shop nissanusa.com today wrap up today's conversation with grant mccaslin's basketball program uh chris i know that we've got probably a long list of i'd like this and i'd like this and i'd like this and i'd like this (laughs) we're just going to try to narrow it down to maybe a, a top selection or a top two selections and you can kind of roll this out however you'd like. I'd like to kind of take it from obviously Tech's actual perspective, and then you and I can throw in a couple that if we just had uh, you know a wish list, what would be at the top of that uh, ourselves? But what are like priority one, priority two, A or B for Grant McCaslin and the Red Raiders? You think as far as either position or you know style of play, type of player, whatever kind of box or descriptive box you'd like to put them in. Um, what's near the top of that list? 
about to ask you a question, and it's going to be an extremely difficult one to answer. Okay. Lay it on me. <laughs> but you you need a you need another guard and another and, and a big. Okay, replacing your two seniors at at minimum, the two guys that were in your starting lineup for the bulk. That that's really where the the portal focus has to be. The question is, okay, and here I'm just going to give you the equivalent. You want Tariq Owens, or you want Keenan Evans? Can't have both. Got to have one. What's more important to you? That question sucks because the answer is yes. I yes. want them and I want them all. But like that—that's really what you're about to have to answer on on, on uh, this topic. If, that, if you, yeah, I mean, well, I was gonna say that's intriguing. You mentioned yeah. Evans, and I, my answer would be Terry Owens, and that's actually the guy that I was gonna p- compare to my <laughs> wish list guy. Like I want a disruptor in the middle, and they don't have to be big and burly. Uh, long certainly helps. We'd like some size, but uh, if it's in the form of a Tariq Owens or you know even a Zach Smith kind of player, that is at the top of my wish list. So I, I would probably decline the guard. I do think it's interesting you describe that kind of guard because I probably was more so like, hey, when I turn to, to thinking about what type of guard I'd like to bring in, uh, I'm thinking facilitator, distributor, really true and natural point guard. Keenan Evans did some of that, but he was also a big time scoring impact kind of guard for you as well. So I, I'm interested in that comparison, but you're, you're cheating off my notes here because Tariq Owens is going to be my actual answer <laughs> here in a minute. So I got to go ahead and go with Tariq, I think. Yeah, Ke- Keenan was, um, I think Keenan did what the game asked. Um, and like, because like, for example, you know who, who who I'm looking for here uh, to to add to your starting lineup to play alongside Pop theoretically is somebody that's got to be able to play the point and handle the ball a lot, and you want somebody that that takes care of it, not a turnover machine, that defends 94 feet, that can get into the paint whenever you know wh- whenever he wants to, and and then you know again can can kind of score, facilitate, whatever, and and who we're talking about. I mean, here, here are the names: Ray J. Dennis, Taman Lipsy, Jamal Shed. I mean, they, they, these are old heads. Well, Lipsy's just a sophomore for his Iowa State team, but the other guys are, you know, Dennis was a, a portal guy for Baylor. Uh, you know, then you, you obviously look at um, oh, who's the other one I just said? Shed. Um, oh, Shed. Yeah, he's been there for 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 several several years for Houston. But that's kind of – I think there's a direct correlation in why those teams had such good years and those particular players being the head of the snake. Hmm. You know, um, I think that you look at Texas's inconsistency. I think look at Tyrese Hunter is just kind of like uh, up and down. I think you looked at TCU's inconsistency. Uh, I think you looked at, uh, y- you know, some of their inconsistency with Avery Anderson at guard and – uh, some of the different, you know, like, but when you when you find the teams that have like the pure, I mean, in, in Kansas, it's like Dewan Harris was the only consistent thing that they had, and they still were a, a, a round of thirty two team, even though they're playing like four and a half people, you know, and there was no scoring to speak of, and the one guy you didn't even think was going to play for you much, Furphy, but I just think Dewan Harris. So that that's, you know. I think it's one and one A. I can't. It's hard for me to tell you that I want Tariq over Keenan or Keenan over Tariq. I feel like I'm hearing you lean more towards the perimeter, though. Is that the case? I, I, ju- I just think that guards, because um, if you have a, you could have a Tariq Owens that can protect the rim and all that. But if you don't have a guard that can utilize him or throw the lob to him or get it to him or whatever yeah. it, it's it's moot we see a lot of rim protectors there's just very few quality pure like point guard leader type guys and their teams usually do really really well they just figure out the game and when this when it comes to this time of year more often than not the the team with the best guards is gonna is gonna win so yeah you know i mean you, you need both no sure yeah, don't misunderstand what we're saying, but if you if you had to, you know, forced to make a choice, I'd probably take Keenan. Hey, I'll say this: Why not go this route? A guard who is I don't know six 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 eight. Let's just get some <laughs> length on the outside as well, a little tweener action or whatever. But yeah, you hear so often about getting to March in this tournament. 
uh, is a guards tournament and things like that. So definitely something to factor in. Let us know what your answer would be uh, if you could choose only one there in the YouTube comments. And curious to see uh, what the results turn out to be in reality for Grant McCaslin and the Red Raiders as uh, we begin this process. Or I say we, they probably have already begun this process even before the season came to an end of identifying guys and having some expectation of uh, who and what might be available uh, to wear a Red Raider uniform in year two under Coach McCaslin. Good stuff as always, Chris. Enjoyed the time as always, and uh, looking forward to another episode tomorrow, man. We'll see you then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we will do it uh, again uh, tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Please uh, you know, hit that smash button on the subscribe uh, on the YouTube part, and uh, we appreciate everybody listening, and uh, we're kind of starting to roll now, a little more football incorporated. And That's right. Yeah, hoops uh, – Hoops certainly still on the on the mind of everybody too. So we'll uh, we'll try to get this roster built at some point in the next I don't know day to uh, four months. Yeah, let's play general manager. You know, <laughs> since that's now a thing uh, within college sports, it's not just a fantasy. All right, for yeah. Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. Make sure the plane, the plane. <laughs> Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts, so you never miss an episode. Thanks for being out there, and we hope to see you back for the next round of Locked On Texas Tech.